In this video, we'll be using the formula for the volume of a cylinder, and we'll be using that to solve two different problems uh, with two different cylinders. First of all, a cylinder is a shape that has uh, the top and the bottom, or it would be called the bases, and in the case of a cylinder, each base is going to be identical to the other. They're congruent. And with cylinders, the shapes are circles. So that's an important thing to note. Sometimes you can have tall, skinny cylinders like this one, or you might have uh, shorter, fatter cylinders like this one. But in each case, the uh, formula for calculating the volume is going to be the same. Uh, when you calculate the volume of a cylinder, the, the formula is actually very similar to the formula for the volume of a prism, which uh, I did in, an, in a previous video. Um, but the formula is going to start out just like this. The volume is equal to the area of the base, area of the base, times the height. The area of the base times the height. And when we had a prism, we were looking at rectangular prisms. So the base was a rectangle, and all we needed to do was multiply the length times the width of that rectangle to get the area of the base. Well, in this case, the base is a circle. So we're going to have to use the formula for the area of a circle, and then multiply it by the height. So the altered version of this formula is going to be volume is equal to the area of the base is a circle. Hopefully you'll remember that the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared and then times the height of the cylinder. So here's the area of the base, pi r squared because it's a circle, and then the height of the cylinder. At this point it's pretty easy. Now we're just plugging in some numbers. So let's do this. Let's say the volume is equal to pi times the radius of the base. Remember the top and bottom are both the bases, they're identical. One thing you have to be careful of is sometimes problems will give you the radius of this circle, sometimes it will give you the diameter. If it gives you the diameter, make sure you cut it in half to get the radius. But in this case, it actually does give us the radius. The radius is 5, so in place of r in our formula, I'll put in 5, so now it's 5 squared times what's the height of our cylinder? The height is 15. And now we can just simply use our calculator. So if I go over to my calculator here and if I just do pi times 5 squared times 15, let's try to get it so you can actually see it. And I don't know if this will work out well. For pi, you can use 3.14 as an approximation. A lot of calculators actually have a pi key, which uh, is even easier to use. You probably can't see it too well, but my pi key is right there. So this is pi times 5 squared times 15. I'm just entering it just like it appears there. Equals, and the answer that we get is, let me round to the nearest tenth, we'll say 1,000 one hundred seventy eight point one and what are the units all of these lengths are measured in centimeters so we'll say that this is in centimeters cubed volume is always in cubic units let's try a different one this time we knew the radius we knew the height we were trying to calculate the volume what if we know the volume and we know the radius, and we're trying to find the height. Well, we can still do it, we just need to go backwards. We're going to start with our same formula. Volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times the height. And let's plug in the numbers that we know. The volume is 1,520 is equal to pi What's the radius? The radius is here. Again, make sure they're not giving you the diameter. In this case, it is actually telling us what the radius is. The radius is 11 squared times the height. So we want to solve for the height. 
first thing, let's get rid of that exponent. You can, at this point, you can solve for the height in multiple ways. Uh, I'm going to start by getting rid of the exponent. So 1,520 is equal to pi times, what is 11 squared? You might remember that uh, without turning to a calculator. If you need a calculator, that's okay too. 11 squared is 121. So pi times 121 times h. And now, let's get h by itself. Now we're just solving an equation. So this is going back to some very basic math, very basic pre-algebra. How do we get this h by itself? We have pi times 121 times h. If we want to get rid of these things, we need to do the opposite. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So if we divide this side by pi, pi's cancel. If we divide this side by 121, the 121's cancel. And that leaves us with only h on the side. But remember, this is an equation. If we're going to do something to one side, we need to do the same thing to the other side. So we need to divide this side by pi and divide this side by 121. And we will should get our answer. You have to be careful about how you enter this. There are, again, there are a couple ways that you can do this, entering this into your calculator. The way I'm going to show you here is I'm just going to do 1,520 divided by pi, and I'm going to hit divide again, divided by 121. So 1,520 divided by pi divided by 121 equals... 3.9986 and on and on and on. That is very, very close to 4. So I'm going to say, in this case, h is approximately equal to 4, and I should label my units here. This is in inches. So h is 4 inches high. The height of this cylinder is 4 inches. So we had to work backwards. In the first problem, we were calculating the volume based on the radius and the height. In the second problem, we knew the radius, we knew the volume, we had to work backwards to get the height. A little bit trickier, but hopefully not too bad. So hopefully if you come across any problems like this, hopefully this video will help you out and make it easy for you.